Good morning, children. I am Sarita Isis. Now I am going to teach you genetic code. In the last class, I taught you about the transcription process. And after transcription, the genetic information are transmitted from mRNA for protein synthesis. So the genetic information for protein synthesis are existing in the form of genetic code. So let's see the definition of genetic code. The group of nucleotides that specify one amino acid is known as codon. Codon I'll explain later. And the relationship between the sequences of amino acids in a polypeptide chain is called the genetic code. Actually, genetic codes consist of information for protein synthesis. And this genetic code consists of codon. So, what is actually codon? I will explain. See, codon. Codon consists of three nitrogen bases. Three nitrogen bases. Actually, we have four nitrogen bases. Arginine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. In case of RNA, thymine is replaced by uracil. So, the codon consists of three nitrogen bases. So, it is called a triplet cord. Triplet cord. For example, example, A, U, G, U, 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 C, like that, the chain, the sequence is going on for protein synthesis. Here, the first three nitrogen bases form a cord. Okay, so the three nitrogen bases together form a codon and that cord for a particular amino acid or that is coded for a specified amino acid that is methionine. Methionine. Sit here. So as it has three nitrogen bases, this codon is known as triplet cord. Is it clear about codon and the triplet cord? So the triplet cord consists of three nitrogen bases that is called a codon and that cord for a specified amino acid. And another three, we can take U, U, U as a triplet cord or a codon that specified for making another amino acid phenylalanine. Phenylalanine. And U, U, C also for phenylalanine. And another one, G, U, G. So, G, here also phenylalanine. G, U, G, another triplet codon. Here, this is another triplet codon. And G, U, G codon for another amino acid, valine. So, each codon is specified for amino acid. Specified amino acid. Is it clear about codon and uh, triplet cord? Genetic cord are information, so genetic information for protein synthesis. Okay, and now we can see the details of genetic cord. So here, the genetic cord, the term was first reported by George Gamow. And he suggested the genetic code, the information from mRNA for protein synthesis are existing in the form of genetic code. The genetic code is a sequence of information or nucleotides. And his findings were supported by three scientists. The scientist name, okay, I'll give you the scientist name. First one. The first one, Har Gobind, Har Gobind Khorana. And the second scientist, Marshall Nirenberg. And the third one, Severo Oka. So the three scientists through their experiments 
they were supported the concept of Jyot Gyamo. So the Jyot Gyamo was first reported the genetic code as it contains genetic information for protein synthesis and its findings were supported by the three scientists through their experiments. And they constructed a checkerboard. That I will teach you about the checkerboard. So before that I want to tell you as I told you there are four nitrogen bases and these four nitrogen bases are existing in the form of triplet cord or codon for coding 20 amino acids. So 20 amino acids are coded by this codon. So four nitrogen bases are there. So four raised to three. That is 4 into 4 into 4. So total 64 codons are there in order to call for 20 amino acids. So for 20 amino acids, 64 codons are there. Okay. So out of the 64 codons, only 61 codons call for 20 amino acids. 20 amino acids. And the remaining 3 codons do not call for any amino acid. Do not call for any amino acids. And they are U, A, A, U, A, G and U, G, A. So these are the three amino acids, sorry, three codons that do not call for any amino acids. And that's why they are called stop codon. Stop codon or nonsense codons or nonsense codons. Or we can call it as termination codon. Okay. So I'll show you how the 64 codons are formed in the checkerboard. I'll show you. So this is a checkerboard, how it uh, forms a tissue. So there are 20 amino acids coded by 61 codons and the 3 are stop codons. We can see the checkerboard. In the first position I have given uracil, cytosine, arginine and guanine. Why? That is U because it is mRNA. And here also the same sequence uh, have given. And here the four bases are given in uh, single base. That means in a single column we have to consider the four bases. So first how we can arrange or how the scientist arranged the genetic code in the checkerboard we can see. So first we can see this U, U then the first uracil. So we can write over here U, U, U. Then again U, U. C. U, U, C. Then second, U, U, A. Then U, U, G. Okay. And the second one, we can take uracil and cytosine together. U, C, U. Then U, C, C. Then U, C, A. And U, C, G. Like that, we can write the 64 codons. And out of this 64 codons, only 61 are coded for making 20 amino acid. The three remaining three, that is U, A, A, U, G, A, and U, A, G, are stop codons or nonsense codons or termination codons that never call for any amino acids. And this is the checkerboard. You can complete the checkerboard. This checkerboard is there in your textbook. And out of this, these two are coded for the amino acid female LNA. Like that, each codon. So this is a single codon which consists of a triplet cord. That means the codon which consists of three nitrogen bases. And that called for a single amino acid.
And next we can see the salient features of genetic cord. So what are the salient features of genetic cord? The first feature is it is a triplet cord. Triplet cord. The genetic cord is a triplet cord. That means the genetic cord consists of three nitrogen bases that form a cordon. And there are 64 cordons. 64 cordons corded for 20 amino acids and out of the 64, 61 only corded for amino acid, the remaining 3 act as stop cordon or termination cordon or nonsense cordon and they are UAA, UGA and UAG. Okay. So that is the first feature and second feature is unambiguous, unambiguous, that is ambiguity, ambiguity is the unambiguous, that means no confusion. Here a single cordon or a triplet cord, cord for only single amino acid or only one amino acid. A cordon cord for one cordon cord for a specified amino acid or specific or specific amino acid. A single cordon cord for a specific amino acid. For example AUG cord for methionine methionine you can write it as met okay and u u u called for female allele and we can write another example g u g called for another amino acid valley so this nature is called unambiguous so that means one cordon called for only one amino acid that is a feature. And the next feature is third one, covalus. Covalus. So the sequences in the genetic cord, for example, AUG, UAG, UUU, UAC, these we can read this information continuously. There is no comma or no punctuation between the adjacent cordon. Okay, so that is called the, the formalis nature. Formalis. And the fourth one is not overlapping. Not overlapping. So here, in this continuous sequence, there is no overlapping. That means, the same example we can write. See, so this is a cordon which consists of three nitrogen bases. So a part of this cordon never form the part of the next cordon. So we can call this feature as non-overlapping feature. And the fifth feature is universal. Universal. Universal means the genetic cord is universal. It is unique for all living things. That is same in all living things even from the primitive organisms like bacteria to advanced organisms like human beings, the same genetic cord is there for according for amino acid or for protein synthesis. That is called a universal nature. And the next nature we can see the sixth one, and that is initiator. Initiator cord. So there is an initiator cord. And initiated cordon is the starting cordon and that is AUG. So AUG is the initiated cordon or starting cordon for the translation process. And the seventh feature is termination cordon. Termination cordon. So as I told you, out of 64 cordons, only 61 are corded for amino acid. And the remaining three are stop cordons or nonsense cordons. They are UAA, 
U A G and U G A. These are the stop columns. And the last feature that is the generacy. The generacy is an important feature that, as I told you, one colon is specified for one amino acid only. Like that, one amino acid can be coded by many colons. For example, I will give you an example. See, phenyl alanine, U, 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 that is coded for the amino acid phenyl alanine. Okay, and this phenyl alanine is coded by another colon that is U, U, C. So, U, U, C also coded for phenyl alanine. We can write phen like this. Okay, phi. F P H E. That is phi and N. So this feature is called the B generosity. I'll give you another example. Another example. So G U U. G U U for it for valine amino acid. And the same valine is called by another codon G U G. That also for valine. That means a single amino acid is coded by many codons and that feature is called a degeneracy. What is unambiguity? Unambiguity means one codon is coded for a single amino acid only. That means U, U, U coded for only phenyl alanine and that feature is called the unambiguity. No confusion about that. But we can say the degeneracy feature means phenyl alanine or one amino acid is coded by many codons. Is it clear? One codon is coded for a single amino acid, but one amino acid is coded by many codons, and that feature is degeneracy. Is it clear? Uh, another, I will give you one example. See, if we know the sequence of, for example, A, U, G, U, 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 G, U, A, U, U, C, G, U, G. If we know the sequence of this codon, we can easily find out the sequence of amino acid. First, we can see A, U, G, that is match. Okay. And this is one triplet or one coron. Then U, U, U. That got for phenyl alanine. Then G, U, A. That is for valine. And U, U, C. That is again for phenyl alanine. And this is again for valine. So we can find out this sequence of amino acid from the checkerboard and the genetic code dictionary also available. And this is the sequence of amino acid. So if we know the sequence of genetic code, we can easily find out the sequence of amino acids coded by that sequence of code. Hope you understood everything about genetic code. That's all for today. Thank you.